Our next Jason recipient is Lenora Jarvis Mackey, President, CEO, River City Community Development Corp, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. She, you can come on, you can start heading this way. It's, it's okay, it's okay. While she's coming up, I'll, I'll start for you. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Elizabeth City, North Carolina underwent an extensive redevelopment of its waterfront district without representation from the African American community, which would be directly affected. Joined by other concerned individuals, Mrs. Jarvis Mackey was one of the founders of River City Community Development Corporation, RCCDC, a nonprofit organization in 1990 to ensure their property would not become the parking lot for the new development. RCCDC has a multifaceted vision to empower Elizabeth City and the surrounding community residents by providing them with the necessary tools, resources, and a support system to ultimately improve their quality of life. After conducting a community needs assessment, the corporation developed programs to directly address concerns of lower income residents. These programs include housing counseling and development, youth development, youth bill, business and economic development, and social culture awareness. Mrs. Jarvis Mackey has been instrumental in affecting the completion of the Renaissance Village, a $1.7 million housing subdivision consisting of 17 single family homes for the first time homeowner and a Renaissance Commons, a $3.6 million, 48 unit community complex, which offers independent living accommodations and an active community center for adults 55 and older. Hey, I, I can live there now, okay. <laughs> Under Mrs. Jarvis Mackey's leadership in 2015, a 7,000 square foot small business incubator was developed to house small aspiring entrepreneurs, which is located on the property in which the organization was founded. The organization is now poised to leverage resources to develop an 18 unit multifamily housing development for veterans. Mrs. Jarvis Mackey is ever passionate about her work and organization which she does not view as her job, but as, uh, as her job as work but her life ministry. Due to her efforts, RCCDC has made over $26 million investments into the community through housing, business, and youth development, the economic development projects and programs. In addition to her duties as president and CEO of the RCCDC, Mrs. Jarvis McKee as the devoted wife to Dr. Claude McKee, as well as the proud mother of two sons, Calvin and Jabari, and the delighted grandmother. Delighted, honey, you wrote this yourself, didn't you? <laughs> of five grandchildren, Ashani, Christopher, Ariana, CJ, and Isaac. Woo, get on over here. I just told Andy, he just read my whole speech. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, it is with much humility that I accept the Housing Assistant Council Skip Jason Community Service Award. I can say that I knew Skip briefly because he was here when I first started um, coming to HACS conferences. I didn't know him personally, but this is really a great honor to accept this award tonight. I started this journey in community economic development over 26 years ago without any knowledge of what it entailed. River City CDC was founded in 1990, as he said, for the express purpose of revitalizing what was the heart of the Black Business District. So I won't go into all those details because they've already been said. 
but my first encounter with the need for affordable housing was at the beginning of my journey when my staff of one and a couple of community volunteers implemented a community cleanup day. We were very enthusiastic about removing the blight on the block where the revitalization was to take place. This particular block was blighted and was considered a high drug trafficking and crime area and lacked economic development opportunities. While we were cleaning up in the, br cleaning up in the brush, there were several, several piles of clothing that were strategically in piles that we later found out were beds occupied by the homeless. There was a real, this was a reality check and a rude awakening of the housing need for disenfranchised and my call to fulfill my purpose in life. I grew up in Northeastern North Carolina in a faith-filled, hard-working family that spent most Sundays all day in church. In addition to learning the value of hard work, early on, we learned the power of the will. At home and in church, I learned where there is a will, there is a way, and that prayer changes things. I also learned that when God enables us to develop skills and talents, they are not just for us to enjoy, but are meant to be shared. Dream big with a purpose is something else that I learned from my parents. I didn't just learn about dreaming, but I learned about giving back. And this is when I started my faith walk. First, there was the development of the 17-unit single-family housing development for first-time homebuyers. Next came the development of our 48-unit apartment complex for the elderly. The after-school and youth build program empowered me to branch out beyond housing and transform the lives of high school dropouts. The opening of our 7,000 square foot business incubator empowered entrepreneurs to in initiate thriving businesses. And currently, we are in the pre-development phase of an 18 unit multifamily housing development for, for veterans. In addition, under construction, under construction, a homeless shelter, the Mary Walker House for our homeless youth bill students. I am honored tonight to have Ms. Mary Walker here with me, who donated the house for us to rehab. And I would like to ask her to stand and thank her again for her generosity. I would also at this time like to ask, I have two board members here tonight that travel with me to, uh, for me to receive this award. And I would like to ask Jennifer Lucas to stand as well. At this time, I would like to truly thank Hack for providing leadership, inspiration, and resources and for underserved rural communities. You have been one of our champions related to housing issues that impact communities of low wealth for over 20 years in Northeastern North Carolina. I would like to extend a special thanks to Shantara and the technical assistance staff. They have truly been an asset to our organization over the years. We have been a part of HACC for over 15 years and the work that they do and continue to do is for, I am forever grateful. Tonight, on the behalf of homeowners who never imagined themselves homeowners, thank you. On behalf of the elderly who are able to live independently in a safe, decent housing community, thank you. On behalf of the homeless teenagers with no place to go when darkness falls, thank you. On behalf of high school dropouts who earned their GEDs and construction certifications who are now gainfully employed and in college, thank you. From my heart to yours, thank you for empowering me to find a way for my will. And before I conclude, I would like to also ask one of my staff this year, 
Andrew Wills, and my good friend Celeste to stand and be acknowledged for coming to support me tonight. Where there is a will, you are the way. Thank you.